Let's welcome our next speaker, Irene Chinchilla, and her talk, The Meaning of Music. As a second year TED Ed student, one of the first things someone told me was that I was gonna ha have a really hard time finding another passion I was gonna talk about. Last year, I talked about art, and I got to the conclusion that art is a way we identify ourselves, that we have passed our identities, our beliefs, our religion, everything that is important to us to mute, eh, towards art. And then I started thinking, why do we need to find a meaning for everything we do? And then I started to think, what is something else that is really important to me? Something that is prevalent in my life, in my family's life, in my friend's life. Something that we see every single day. And this connects to the meaning of everything we do. Why do we need to find meaning in everything we do? Why do we question why we act a certain way? And this is because of human instinct. This comes back to what makes us human, to our very core. And then I started thinking, music is a very big part of everyone's life. Whether to you listen it to in the car, where you listen it while you're working, it's something really important, something that you make when you feel sad, when you feel excited. But what does music mean? Does it mean the same to me that it means to you? Well, let's look at the definition of music. What is music by textbook definition? It's the science or art of ordering tones or sounds in succession, combined with rhythm, melody, and harmony. A composition having unity and continuity resulting in an expression of emotions, ideas, and our memories. I don't know about you guys, but when someone asked me what music is, if I were to describe it, I wouldn't tell it's a pattern of rhythm or harmonies. I would talk about how we create music, what music I like, what music makes me feel like. And this comes back to my first memories of music. One of the first songs I memorized by heart was a song that my grandmother used to sing to me every time I went to visit her. It was a war song about Nicaragua, where she was from. It was one of the only songs that she remembered because she had Alzheimer's. Why was this song so important to her? It was because it reminded her of home and the reason why she had to leave her home, her friends, her family. She passed this song to me even though she didn't know why it meant so much to her. Every time I went to visit her, I used to sing that song. It was basically just a song about like killing people. But I didn't used to sing those lyrics with those meanings. I used to sing it because of the respect I had towards the heritage of my grandmother, the love I had for her, and the admiration that I had for her living towards that stuff. And she passed on her stories, her suffering, her courage towards the song, towards me. But where did music arise from? It's thought music had arisen before language. It just started as beats and claps, someone just stomping in the ground, stomping in a wood. It arised from people needing to communicate. Humans communicate, it's part of who they are. When they needed to move some, some place to another, they had a pattern, a rhythm they used to employ. When music started evolving, while well, humans evolved, it evolved with them. And then philosophers trying to fi find out why is it so important to us? Why are we so inclined to find music, to find patterns, to find rhythm in everything we do? They thought it had something to do with the stars, but it's not, it's not that scientific. While we evolved and as humans and scientists studied and everything else, they got to the conclusion that music is the harmony between human beings. But what does it mean that it's the harmony between human beings? Is just a song between people? No, it's understanding. Start to think of what culture do you think of that represents music the most? All of them, there's not one. There is no culture that doesn't value music as the same as the other. They may have different types of music, different types of messages they portray to this music. But in all cultures, it's part of it. When you listen to a song, you say it's from some place. You listen to the harmony. You say, like, oh, this sounds from something that would play in Latin America, something that would play in the Middle East. Through music, we live. We communicate the ideals we have, the things we believe, the things we cherish, and we express it. Has it ever happened to you that when you're feeling really sad, you just put a sad song on and you feel even sadder, but you feel great at the same time? 
because the artist was able to put into words, into music, the feelings you were feeling, the things that maybe you can't explain to yourself. Has it ever happened to you that you just are in a mood that you, someone tells you, how are you? You can't really tell what you're feeling, but you listen to a song, it's like, that's, that's how I feel. And this creates a bond between the artist and the people who are listening to it. In this way, we socialize our ideas, the things that are important to me. If I share a song, you will start to think, oh, this is what her, she thinks, what she thinks is important to her. And through this consequence, we create an understanding between humans. We start to understand why we act a certain way, why someone else acts a certain way. And we create respect towards this. A song you may listen to here may be listened in Russia. A song you listen in Australia may be listened to in Egypt. It may be the same song. It may be the only thing that could bond you to the other person that is listening that song. Maybe two people that have never met before, that will never meet, that can't even communicate because they don't speak the same language, really have the same favorite song. And through this, we create a community, something that we should employ in our world instead of dividing us. So it's up to you to pass on what you love about music, your favorite songs, what it means to you, to pass it to your friends, to pass it to your parents, to pass it to your children. For example, as I grew older, all the songs that I started listening to came to like my Spotify playlist. My dad really likes rock. And in the 80s, he listened to it in, in high school. And then he passed on this love to me. And I listened to that song. My mom, she started telling me the songs she listened to while she was in college. And she passed on these songs to me. And that's why my Spotify playlist is a mess. I have different genres. I may start with rock and then with pop and then a song I may listen to at a party. And I really love that because it represents all the people that have influenced my life and your life, your Spotify playlist, the playlist that you listen to and have all these memories from. When you listen to a song, you remember where you first heard it. Maybe not that, but what you were feeling in that moment. You associate memories and events with emotions, and these are connected towards music. When you communicate these, you create respect, as I told you before. When you create respect, and when you say to another person, I respect what you feel, I understand why you're feeling this, why you think this, we start to create a world that is more united. Through this, when we create respect and communication, we will start to have less conflict than we have in the world right now. That may just be simply solved if people started talking to each other. If they told, I feel this way because of this, and through this, we can do it in a very simple way, is just communicating music. So I leave you with a small quote that I really like that represents what music means to me, may it not mean the same to you, and that's up to you to figure out what it means. Dear music, thanks for always clearing my head, healing my heart, and lifting my spirits. Thank you.